everyone, welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Jack and joining me today is brand designer and founder of All Caps, Maggie Johnson. How are you doing today, Maggie? Hi, I'm so good. How are you, Jack? I'm doing good. I'm excited to see what you're going to be working on with us today. If you're joining us in our live chat on Behance or YouTube, feel free to ask us any questions and say hi. Let us know where you're joining from. If you haven't yet, please check out and subscribe to our Adobe Live YouTube channel and follow us on at, follow us at Instagram at Adobe Live um, as well. I'm really excited. Like I said, um, Maggie's got a really fun project planned for us. It happens to combine a few of my favorite things, uh, food, branding, and Adobe Illustrator. Um, but Maggie, I'll let you go ahead and share your work with us and tell us all about what you've got planned today. Yeah, so uh, like Jack said, uh, my name is Maggie Johnson. I'm an Atlanta-based designer. Um, I am the proud founder of my own little branding company now. She's new, but um, we've already got some clients that are already so great and so loyal. So having a lot of fun with that. Um, I have actually been using Adobe products for a good 10 years now. This is my 10 year. I got the little anniversary pin this year and I'm so excited about it. Um, but yeah, I... My training is in product design. So my degree is in industrial design. I got it from Georgia Tech. Um, and when studying product design, I started to realize that I liked the branding side of product design the most. And so that's kind of how I got pushed into branding design. I was like, well, this is my favorite. This is what I should do with my life, you know? So super thankful to say that that's where I got um, pulled into. Um, but yeah, so my title, I say I'm a branding designer and optimist, um, couple quirky things about me. My favorite things in the world are my people. I'm a huge people person. I'm chatty. If you can't tell and good chai latte and a rom-com and yes. I'm an avid. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm an avid rewatcher of rom-coms also. Um, I did want to go ahead. Shameless plug, um, kind of like where to find me. Um, is and my work is at allcapsdesignllc.com or that is our Instagram tagged right there also um, and everything's linked there um, also. But yeah, I did want to kind of show you guys really quick my process. Um, this is, I don't know, Jack, have you ever seen the squiggle before? No, I don't think I've ever seen this before. Actually, okay. this is new to me. Okay. I mean, well, this is like what I feel. Right. <laughs> Right. So okay. it's an accurate description. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I am allowed to, I promise I had permission, but I stole this idea. Um, I stole this, we call it the squiggle process. I actually learned this from a professor um, at the very beginning of my education. And he was like, a lot of designers processes look like this. And he was like, I think we should lean into it. And so I kind of wanted to touch on this for just a second. Um, I do feel like each branding process each design process is really different just depending on the project depending on the client and um my process often looks a little like this sometimes I'm floating around in what I call the like brain dump category for a lot longer sometimes I'm gathering a lot more inspo um this something that looks like a brand <laughs> part uh kids sometimes look like less together or more together um and I just what I really wanted to say to everybody is that I feel like I'm always learning how to perfect the perfect process. And I think we all are. So hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, like hopefully we can kind of all relate to that. I just wanted everybody to know that my nice little squiggle, she's fun. She's somewhat organized, but <laughs> that's kind of what my process is like. But yeah, that's me. Yeah. I love this graphic. It's great. It's definitely <laughs> a, a perfect representation of like how my mind works <laughs> right <so. laughs> right it's a nice little it's a nice little squiggly mess in there but we still know how to produce good work and that's all that matters but yeah that's kind of what I wanted to say about me um you can find my projects and things on um my website I have a personal website which is maggiemajeris.com and then all caps's website where you can see our work there too but anyway that's what I got about me so well, thanks for sharing. We've got a bunch of people joining in the chat already. I see uh, we've got Clever, we've got Umacorn, a bunch of the regulars. Gareth, welcome in, everybody. If you have any questions, like I said, um, for Maggie um, or me, as we're working through this, go ahead and just throw them in the chat for us. And um, yeah, why don't you get, let us uh, see what we're going to be working on today? Okay, so 
drum roll. <laughs> oh, I, I love so, that. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> I am so excited to present the brand we're going to design today. We are designing a brand from start to finish. Um, I feel like it's a brand everybody can relate to. Everybody loves this. It's food related. We're going to talk about pizza today. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Who doesn't love pizza? It's the best food. Yes. You can eat it. You could eat it all the time. There's breakfast pizza, gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan. Yes, I have had a breakfast pizza before. Pretty good stuff. It's like, (laughs) literally. It was between pizza or tacos, but I decided to do pizza. Oh, yeah. Well, both would have been winners (laughs) in my book. Right, right. (laughs) In the chat, if you have a a favorite, let's say, favorite pizza toppings, but also favorite style of pizza. So true. Because people have opinions on it. Are you Chicago style or... yeah. Detroit right. style loyalty right. loyal yes. regional loyalty for the pizza yes <laughs> Detroit style pizza is good yeah yeah I remember I think we talked about this actually yes. yeah I I honestly don't know if I have a favorite I like a really really cheesy pizza so I think as long yes. as there's cheese on it I'm there you know what I mean yeah I agree yeah. I, I would agree with that <laughs> yeah but yeah so like I said we're going to be designing a pizza brand today um, this is probably something that branding designers definitely know and other designers probably know. These are just kind of like elements of brands that we're going to be going through today and the softwares that we're going to use with them. So obviously we're picking some colors type. We're going to design a logo suite. So hopefully we're going to go and design three different kinds of logos today. Um, a stamp, which I call a stamp, but I think of it more like something you just put on a sticker, like that restaurants could use to stick on things. Um, a menu, which I'm really excited about, and then some mock-ups to show kind of everything in action. So that's kind of the rundown. That's, that's you know, where we're headed. Um, okay, so I did want to talk about the different kinds of pizza brands and what we're going to be designing today. So when I think of pizza brands, I think there's like old school, there's so many, but we're narrowing it down here today. There's old school pizza brands and there's modern pizza brands. And I'm sure you could kind of think about what those would look like. We're going to do our best to kind of combine these and create a brand that's a little relatable, um, feels old school, but can still apply in like today's society. Visually, that could look something like this. So over here, we've got, you know, this is kind of what I think of when I think of like old school pizza brands, you know, maybe like Illustrati, lots of characters, maximalism, fun patterns, which like, I really do have a special place in my heart for. I think they're actually really hard brands to design. And the checker, Um, the checker pattern is like key. (laughs) Yes. It's like so pizza, right? Like you, you just, you see it, it screams pizza. Mm -hmm. Um, And then also this kind of like family crest is kind of what I would call it, you know, feels very Italy. Well, I say that I've never been to Italy, but (laughs) feels very American Italy, you know what I'm saying? Then we have the other side of things, which is very modern, you know, as minimalist as possible, um, definitely red. I love it. I think a lot of modern brands will actually, you know, pull in fun colors sometimes. Like saw a blue pizza brand the other day and I was like, why does it kind of work, you know? That's but, interesting. I know. It probably stands out, make your brand stand out, that's for sure. For sure. We we love that. We love a brand that looks like nobody else's. So then I kind of compiled those two. And this is what I kind of think of when I think of nostalgic pizza brands. I think, you know, things look a little like there's a lot of off white things feel kind of old papery almost, you know, I want to say like, it doesn't sound like a pleasant word, but like dingy in a good way. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, is kind of what I think of. I love these like scripty um, serif fonts that feel, you know, you can't really tell which was which. Um, and then kind of illustrate So this is get what we're going to try to kind of achieve, I think, today. What do you think? Yeah, that's great. I, it shows in your, di- your, you know, your Venn diagram from the previous slide and everybody's commenting on how they like the, the um, presentation that you put together here. But you've got oh, the two... You sides and they kind of overlap in the middle and you can see that in your um you know the examples that you pulled the um the overlap there you know on on the left you've got the like nostalgic on the right you've got the really modern and in the middle you're kind of like keeping the elements you know the that like the pizza brand is kind of rooted in right like you're not losing that like classic the things that make it 
you know, identifiable, but that, that you're kind of losing that a little bit with the modern, right? So you're kind of ending up somewhere in the middle where like it's a little bit more elevated towards a little a little more modern, but also still rooted in classic classic for pizzeria. Sure, for sure. For sure. Classic is a great word to say it. I feel like as a designer too, I do tend to lean a little bit more towards like what I would call like timeless brands. And sometimes I kick myself for it because I'm like, it's hard. Sometimes it can be really hard to do, you know, like kind of keep both emotions. But okay. So I would love it actually, if everybody could help me come up with a name for our brand today. Typically we don't get to pick our own brand or names for like our clients come with branding. But does anybody have any ideas? I have some if we can't get anywhere. Yeah, let us know in the chat if you've got any suggestions for a pizza, pizzeria. Um, <laughs> a pizza brand. Everybody's talking about their favorite pizza toppings. Uh, oh, lots of I variety. Uh, I love it. What do we have? Olives and mushrooms. Uh, spice. Spicy. I like, I'm like. i a spicy fan. Spicy peppers. Um, yeah. Got che- lots of cheese. As much cheese as humanly possible. So lots of people are on board with you <laughs> margarita we got margarita or with clams clams oh. on a pizza interesting clams grilled chicken pizza. grilled chicken is an underrated pizza topping interesting um oh, pineapples what? anybody said pineapple i know no pineapples yet not yet it's only oh. a matter of time give it time they're too someone will be controversial speak. yes 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 uh, um, um yeah so let's see maggie can you go and gra- do you have your charger nearby for your laptop my charger Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Oh, sorry. Just it just wasn't in. plugged in. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, y'all. That would be a bad day. We're good. We're in motion. <laughs> sorry, it's been it's been plugged in, but it was half plugged in, so it sure has not been plugged in. Thank you. Okay, good. We're moving. We're doing good. So I was thinking doughies could be kind of cute. Did I spell that right? Sure didn't. Doughies. Nice. I was looking up Italian names earlier, um, and I found... Rocco's, Rocco's. Oh yeah, I kind of liked that one. I'm trying to think. Oh, this one was kind of crazy, but Formaggio. Excuse me, I wrote it down here. Formaggio means cheesy, so I was yeah. like, we could make it. We could lean into that. But that's I like, like that idea. Formaggios. Yeah. Um. We do it. Let's oh, see. we got some in the chat. Um, I, we got cheesies. Cheesies, okay. So maybe for Maggio's is the moment, or just cheesies. And we've got this one. I I like this one from Clever. Itza, like e Itza? three e's, and then a t z a h. Itza. <laughs> Itza. I kind of love it. It <laughs> sounds cool. I think that one might be the winner right now. We've also got Biola. I think this is a name suggestion. Pomodoro, although that might have been a pizza t- uh, topping. I think that's oh, like okay. a sauce too. Hard to say. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. What do you think, <laughs> Jack? What do you think? Itza, cheesies, formaggios. What do you think? We're definitely going a cheese route. I feel it. I do um, too. So, mm. I don't know. Do you have a personal fa- just le- a favorite from this list so far? I kind of like itza. I think. All it right, seems... we'll go with that. Okay, it will. Let's think about this. Itza's pizza is probably oh. what it'll end up being. <laughs> I mean, I'm up. I don't know about you, but like, I, I, when it comes to like personal brand projects, I kind of love making brands that have alliteration like that. I'm here it's for just, it. <laughs> I think it's fun. I think it's just, you know, if you're going to do something that's just kind of like fun, right? You know what? And why not lean into today? it? Yeah. Okay. Right. Credit to whoever came up with Eatsa because we're leaning into it. That was clever in that our chat, clever. which uh, clever is always on, on it with the, the names yeah i think clever yeah. lives for names naming things in the chat so <laughs> i have to t- i have to admit too i'm not very good at it like i gotta admit to y'all like if i have to name something it's not my strength like i usually have to call on the troops because that's not necessarily my wheelhouse but well the chat came to our rescue today so i know i know okay so we're keeping eats so we're rolling with it eats is pizza there was a place uh near where I grew up in Chicago. I grew up in Chicago, so I'm a Chicago pizza girl. Yes. But um, there was a place that we, really, uh, like the local shop I asked was called Pudgy's Pizza. Pudgy's Pizza? That's a yes. great name for a pizza place. <laughs> they unfortunately <laughs> did, they did close and get replaced with a different pizza shop, but I always loved that name for a pizza shop, so. I think it's great. See, okay, it's stuff like that that people remember, you know? 
Oh yeah, I remember it still. I, yeah. I, because I thought it was so good. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so I'm thinking, okay, so I'm thinking for this pizza brand, typically we're gonna we're gonna talk about some colors. I do really believe, and a lot of designers disagree with me on this, that colors are subject to change throughout the designing process. When you set them in stone, they're set in stone. But I just really feel like, you know, as you're working with elements, things just sometimes change. And that's a good thing. But I do think in terms of this brand, I was talking about this off-white that we kind of see, especially in these three. So I'm thinking we're definitely going to want to steal an off-white for... Um, like a base color. Like I think it's a good idea to oftentimes bring in a base color. Kind of like in the background, people don't notice it a ton, but it's good to have. So um, also I would like to go on record. Normally I would not directly steal colors like that. <laughs> you would spend lots of time, you know, going through and making sure, like going through Pantone and making sure that the colors, you know, you can find proper colors that you can market and things like that. For the sake of time, we're stealing colors. Nobody get mad at me but okay I do feel like we need a really strong red I feel like we need a really strong red I like this red I'm not wondering if maybe we should make it a little bit more neutral to kind of make it feel a little more nostalgic just a, just a just a tad right now like I said subject to change what do you think no, I agree. I tend to do the same thing with reds. I never go for like a, a just a solid like red. I always make it like a little bit cooler or a little bit warmer. Right. I never like go. So I I'm I'm totally on board with you there. I I always like to kind of push it one way or the other depending yeah. on you no know, what I'm working on. So I know I feel like with the original red we chose, it felt a little it felt a little more Coca Cola, which is not yeah a thing we love. <laughs> However, not really what we're going for. Okay, so I think in true, one thing I really loved about a lot of the older pizza brands is how much like the red and green is used, like the Italy red and green. And so I kind of going into this, I was thinking, I was like, I do feel like we should pull in a green. Um, you know what? Actually, let's do this. Let's, I like this green. I think it's really important to have a dark, dark. I think it's just really important to have that contrast depending on where your brand kind of like pushes it. Like you're going to have text and I'm like thinking, I'm already thinking about like our menu. And I think that mm -hmm. will, like that will require some dark color. So I'm thinking we're going to steal this dark green. I think it might need to be a little bit. Is dark. there a, like you've got the, you, you seem like you intentionally chose a smaller, you know, slice to put your dark green on versus the red so is there like a logic like a hierarchy to this yeah definitely thank you for bringing that up I definitely am thinking hierarchy like like I'm in I'm kind of thinking of this menu because I feel like menus are a big part of restaurants you know so mm -hmm. I'm kind of thinking about this menu overall we'll probably have a base color on that menu what color were we going to want our text to be definitely darker so people can read it um, our logo, I think, needs to be a power red to feel like that nostalgia and, you know, kind of bring in Italy. So that's kind of what I've got going on here. I have base color in the background. Um, this is long, skinny, kind of like a text bar is kind of where my brain was going. Um, and then this guy, I think it's behind it. Yeah. I'm thinking we actually pull in a lighter green. Just to add, like, that will go really well with our red. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, people are <laughs> commenting yeah. on the name. Come and eat a pizza uh, is the tagline, I guess. <laughs> What's it say? What they say? Come and eat a pizza. Come and eat a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't make it up. I love it, y'all. <laughs> and Clever saying that uh, this this pizza shop needs a delivery scooter with a little horn that says it's a as you it, know like. <laughs> it really does like the i can picture the helmet oh my gosh it's gonna be too cute it's gonna we're gonna have the cutest pizza shop in town yeah absolutely i love it y'all i love it okay so this is kind of what i'm envisioning it actually needs to be i think it needs to be a little bit cooler i think it needs to not be like lime i don't know it just feels a little italy to me it kind of reminds me of the like family crest mm -hmm. logos but we're gonna modernize it a little bit Okay, so for type, we're going to talk about type for a second. 
I did go ahead and pre-select some type that I thought we could talk about. One, because I will say fonts, I spend by far the most time yeah. looking at, talking about. <laughs> it is so signature. I also design a lot of type-based logos though. So it literally is like, I believe, like the heart of your brand, you know? And you got to pick good ones and you got to pick good ones right off the bat. So no pressure. But yeah, I literally saw, if not this morning, then it was yesterday and shared with like, you know, uh, like I have a group chat, uh, then Instagram post. It was like, graphic design is just looking at, at fonts for three hours to match a vibe. And yep. <laughs> yep. And trying to explain it to people. I'll be like, mm, yeah, it's too, <laughs> it's just too thick. It feels too like hearty, you know? And they're like, yeah. no, I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So when I was thinking about this, I kind of took it two directions. I, pulled together these I went ahead and showed you guys all of the ones that I was looking at originally these are my nose we can try and talk about those in a minute but I feel like these guys are really pulling in this idea a little bit feels a little like it's it's uh reminiscent of like sign like hand-painted signs like sign yes. painting yes or like lighting signs, like you'd see like a lot on old streets and then you'd see like really thick and really long, you know? So that's why I kept these guys here. I do feel like we need to lean into the scripty serif font for our main one. Um, so yeah, so after looking at all of these and kind of mixing around pairings, I decided that a couple different pairings would work. And these are kind of the two different font pairings that I came down to. So. Well, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's go over to Adobe font for just a second. I want to kind of show you guys how I found these um, because I just really want to talk about this. I swear by Adobe font and the searchability that are fonts in Adobe font because I don't know if designers out here can relate to this, but when you are trying to find a serif font that's not too thick, that's kind of wide, it's impossible. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 just... I, I definitely appreciate the, all of the filtering that they have. So you can get like really narrow in on what you want. I, yeah, I agree. I find that like, I'm able to get that feeling that I'm looking for. Um, oh yeah. By adjusting the properties and stuff, but I'll, I'll oh, let for you sure. how you walk it. You walk us through how you use it. <laughs> no. Yeah. You said it right. Properties is the best thing ever. Um, I just kind of wanted to highlight this when I was looking for, these fonts this mm -hmm. well this was a different search but especially this one book mania which is funny i have used before um it is one of my favorite fonts um i literally like i came in and i was like okay we definitely want a serif font we definitely want a thicker weight i think and then what else did i hit search at the time oh and i said middle contrast like we don't want something i think with logos especially you don't want to have too high of a contrast they can get hard to read um, especially on a small scale so you know and I love to that you can do the sample text so we can go ahead and do it what did we say <laughs> it's a uh, three e's three e's yeah it's, uh... yep and I so I love it because you can just come in here and you can see what all of them will look like so I I literally I I just was like you know that's too thick too wide this is too tall too skinny this is a little too bubbly, you know, and I'm pretty sure, you know, eventually you can find exactly what you're after. And I remember seeing Book Mania and I was like, oh, something else I really want to talk about is probably the most important thing that I'm looking at when picking fonts is glyphs. So when yes. you click, oh, let's yes. talk about glyphs. Yes. I dream about <laughs> glyphs. Yes. I am so happy when a font has has alternate characters like i i love i love it it's so, okay they, it just yes <laughs> no jack just wait just you're gonna be so excited i don't know if you've ever used bookmania but if you come to adobe if you go to window you can or type you can select glyphs but i have it open over here too if you click on it look at all oh yeah this, see this is what i love it's so it's makes like i'm not a hand letterer you know what i Ooh, mean so like if i'm doing anything with type like like with type and like type is the main focus of the logo. Yeah, I'm either leaning on these glyphs or I'm having to like modify my 
you know, letters. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Hand painting letters is you can do it. You can do it. You know, you're also so creative and good at drawing. It's like, yeah. Anyway, it's a thing. It's hard to do though. And so I think it's just so important if you can come in and you have, you know, all these different variations of H's that you can choose from, you'll really find one that fits your font style. Well, Um, I also really like the types of glyphs. I kind of like the the swirl that these letters Mm -hmm. have. Um, I I would not have expected it looking at this font, just like from the outside. Like, what? What? No. (laughs) Bookmania is such a little diamond in the rough. Watch this. This year it's going to be, 2024 is the year for Bookmania. Every font, every logo is going to be designed in it. Um, And same for this one. I think this is called Thirsty. Thirsty script, yeah. Um, spoiler alert for you guys. We're not going to use thirsty script. However, I did think it had a good selection of glyphs. I feel like this feels a little, um, too, too scripty, a little too swoopy for what we're going for. It doesn't feel as classic to me. I feel Mm -hmm. like this would be a really good lemonade brand. If somebody is designing a lemonade, a modern (laughs) lemonade brand, use that. Especially the name, the name too is like, yeah. I know. I oh, literally. Ugh, stop. Actually, maybe nobody <laughs> steal that. I'm gonna design a lemonade brand. I'm gonna use. It. No, yeah. Um, if you guys are wondering why I used hand gloves, hand gloves and difficult waffles is a good little. Those are good words to test fonts because it has a G that goes below. You know, uh, I can't think of the name. The baseline, and mm-hmm. then it has tall letters, has skinny letters. So it's, it's a good one to test fonts with. Okay. So we are going to lean in to this little font pairing. This is Book Mania, Atrament, and Acumen, Cumin, not totally sure how you say it. Um, variable. It's a variable font, which I love variable fonts. If you don't know yeah. what a variable font is, it basically just, um, see, he loves difficult waffles. It basically, it's just a really, it's adaptable. It has all the things, black, condensed, semi-condensed, whole nine yards. Okay. Yeah, you can do really cool stuff with uh, variable fonts if you're into like kinetic type, type oh, yeah. animations, um, especially like on the web. If you're doing like designing a website, you can do like cool type animations with variable fonts. I've actually seen them. I wish so bad I was an animation girl. I would like to learn. It's something I really want to learn in my life, but um, I think it's just so impressive. I think I know what you're talking about, like the type where it'll like expand mm-hmm. and shift and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I love it. Okay. So now we're going to jump into logos. I'm going to go ahead and bring our fonts over here just so we have them. I feel like, I feel like you might agree with me on this, Jack. I think it's so important if you're somebody who draws to go analog when at the beginning of logo processes, when you're designing logos. Um, And maybe this isn't an everybody thing, but I just feel like sometimes all the tools can be like distracting at the very beginning part of the process. You want them all when you're actually designing, but I always go analog and just scribble and brain dump on paper at the beginning of my process. So um, that's what this is. (laughs) This was my little pizza brand brain dump. I ended up drawing like 400 of these little hands. (laughs) I should have picked like the most challenging, you know, thing, like pose and thing to draw. (laughs) I know. I thought about it. (laughs) They teach you in art school, you know, it's like the hardest thing to draw humans and hands. And you're like, yeah, well, (laughs) I'm just too confident that we're going to do well with this. You guys, it's just, it's just, it's going to be great. (laughs) Okay. So, I mean, you captured the, you captured the essence of it. That's all that matters with the sketch, right? Is just to capture the idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The main the main idea. And I'm like, I kind of think I thought it would be nice to kind of pull some illustrated bits in here. So I was thinking, you know, this is this is like my little bit of a brain dump. I was like, talk like what would it look like if we had 3D letters? Like, should we bring in those characters that were in those like retro brands? He's kind of scary, but <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, you know, should I lean into maybe like a plate? Funky letters, like leading into only doing letters and maybe having really textured letters. I, the checkerboard that we talked about, I was just kind of playing with what all of those would look like. Well, then I had this idea of like 
you know, what do you think of when you think of like true, like authentic Italian pizza? Well, like you think of the people, right? And I was like, you think of the gestures and the conversations and the um, mo motions, I guess. So I thought of it when I follow this person on Instagram and I can't think of her name, but she's married to somebody Italian. She's an influencer. And her when her husband talks, he does this all the Are time. Are you talking about Car Carlos? Yes. Yes, I know. I follow them too. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you remember their name. I know I hate that I don't remember their name. But yeah. I thought of them when I was thinking of this. And I thought of his hands yeah. doing that's perfect. this. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's so funny. I love that you know. Uh-huh. So I was thinking we would kind of lean into this hand situation to bring in like the authentic, authentic Italian like motion. Also, it brings actual motion into our brand, which I like too. But so I went ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and start by just tracing this and then we'll kind of manipulate it from there. Um, I am going to go in with the pencil tool, um, which is in the shortcut is in and I'm going to just literally start tracing it. This allows you to create lines uh like you're drawing on your computer um why is that down there sorry okay like you're drawing on a computer it makes it feel a little more like an actual pencil in your hand and create lines like that so we're going to come in and start to trace our hand here this looks a little wonky, so I'm gonna. Do you ever adjust the, oh no, you're using the pencil tool. Okay, never mind. I am right now. I don't always, I am, I don't use the pencil tool as much. I don't know what's gotten into me. I'm just feeling up to it, I guess. Um, I might actually for this hand right here though. Cause I think that would be good. So sometimes I'll go in and use the pencil tool and sometimes I'll go in and um, use the pen tool and draw it. Um, one thing I like about the pen tool is you can get those really crisp circles. Um, if you are on the pen tool and you option pen tool, it will let you curve the lines, which I use yes. all the time. I love that feature. Oh. And I feel like it's like a hidden secret that not a lot of people know about it. Like, such a lifesaver I literally I think I learned about it like three months ago been using illustrator for however long and I've I learned about it like just three months ago literally it's a game changer though I'm telling you yeah for sure so yeah so I'm just gonna start I'm gonna keep working on our hand a little bit this is definitely gonna be a work in progress so everybody stick with me here but yeah Alyssa over on YouTube just typed Carlos in all caps <laughs> so you guys get it I hope I hope this gets to them somehow because I'm literally one of their biggest fans I think they're so fun to watch too funny I love it uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna end tool this again uh Felipe in the chat's asking how you made that curve at the end of the finger I think they're talking about the live corners oh yeah okay the live corners yeah, so if you create just any kind of um, shape that has a point to it, so like there I just drew a rectangle, or if you create um, corners using the pen tool like that, if you select A, which is it direct select tool, direct select tool, and then you hover over or you select just the points that you want to curve, um, so I'll select those and I'll select these, you have what's called the live corners, and this will allow you to curve your corners as much as you want, which is great. One thing I love too, if um, you do the direct select tool and option click it, there's yes. different kinds of corners. Maggie just knows all the good secrets. That, like... I <laughs> am honored that you think I know all the good secrets, <laughs> but it's such a game changer. So you can do, yeah. This was a, I, the, the day I figured this out, cut my workflow in half, I think. Because yeah, I would sit here easy. and I would do, I like originally, you know, I would come in and I would draw the two points mm -hmm. and then I would delete this point and then I would connect them. And then you have to make sure it's even and we don't have to do that anymore because we have live corners and it's okay. Yeah, no, pro tip. 
that I wish I could take credit for creating because that is a game changer. But yeah, so I'm gonna try to work on finishing our little hand here. Yeah, Felipe is saying thanks for the explanation. Nice magic trick. Thank you. Magic trick. That makes me feel important. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I forgot our the inside of our thumb. It's looking crazy, I know, but just stick with me. I feel like that's like one of the most common, commonly said things on Adobe Live. It's looking crazy. I, just stick with me. It's gonna get better. It's so true though. It gets worse before it gets better, but it's gonna yeah. get better. <laughs> okay. So um one thing I want to point out too in actually before I do that, I'm gonna talk about this. If you right click on a line that you drew with the pencil tool, you can go down to simplify and it will, um, you can adjust how many points are in the line, which is so nice. So if you end up drawing a line that looks like this, it's a little crazy, you know, you can simplify it and bring it down and it'll smooth that line out for you because we don't love crazy lines, you know? But yeah, I'm gonna just keep chipping away a little bit. I kind of like this animatedly skinny wrist situation. Yeah, exaggerating little elements like that definitely adds like that personality to the yeah to the hand. It's very rare it makes you it see. Unique. Yeah, it's very rare you see the straight like straight lines out in the world. So. I think, I don't know, what do y'all think? I think we're getting somewhere here. We need to yeah, work Uma on these Korn fingers. Also has a question for you. Um, yeah. Have you tried the smooth tool for smoothing? Oh, I think so. Tell me how to use it again. I'm pretty sure it's under the, if you hold down on the pencil tool, it's like under the pencil tool. Like if you hold oh, down. Oh, 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 I understand. Like click and hold down. Yeah, it's the smooth tool there. And then you just can like draw over your lines to smooth them out. Like if I do that. Yeah, I think you have to have it selected. So that would select, make sense. And Check then out. switch and now draw over it. And you can. Oh, yeah, let's see. I don't know if I did that right. I see what you're saying, though. I have used this before. Yeah, I don't use the smooth tool a ton. I, I tend to do it the way you did with the path simplify. Yeah. Um, but I do know that some people. Uh, have a lot of success with this especially when you're doing like um i've seen people use it to like if they draw like a really crazy shape on the end yeah. of like a letter i think is what i've seen it used on and then they go oh, over it yeah. and smooth it that yeah. checks out because letters are we love them but they're obnoxious that makes sense yeah um i'm gonna definitely have to explore that i'm so excited you said that because i was really hoping that i would get a comp like i was really hoping i would learn something today too i was like <laughs> I know there's always things to be explored with Illustrator, so I really wanted to learn something. I was originally thinking these fingers could be disconnected, but I don't know if that was looking like, was looking right. I think they might, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I kind of like the, um, I liked the gaps. It's up to you. I mean, ultimately it's up to you. I kind of liked the, the little bit. I did kind of like, I, I envisioned gaps, so I think you know what we're gonna we're gonna bring back the gaps. Let's see. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a point, delete a point. This is throwing me off. I definitely want these rounded. If you go under stroke, you can round like the edges of your stroke. I almost always do that. I feel like, because yeah, same. <laughs> I feel like yeah, I feel like it looks incomplete sometimes if I don't have it like that. You know. Yeah, I find that like the, um, the regular. Oh gosh, what are they called? What the end caps? That I know. I not, don't know what it's called. I don't know what that's called either. Actually, um, the straight ones. I, yeah. I the angles of them sometimes bother me, and then yeah. I'm like, I'm just gonna change it around so I can avoid that. <laughs> I know. The, like this guy was bothering me a second ago. Yeah, it was straight on. I was like, I don't want it that way yep. I want it you know <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah all right I think we're not quite there yet let's see let's see 
I think this. Oh, I know what the problem is. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, that makes sense because you have the other ones kind of rounded out. So you'd want to round that part up. Yeah, it was looking too realistic. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Oh, I'm going to say I meant the new smooth option under object path smooth. Object path, path smooth. smooth. I think, okay, again, I think you have it selected first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <gasps> you stop. That is beautiful. Oh, that's going to be used. Oh, we're going to use that right now. I love that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you. Who is that from? Umicorn. Ah, thank you. I appreciate that. I just... I'm telling you, it's one thing I actually really love about these programs is I feel like you just, you're always learning something about it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, We've got another vote for the fingers with gaps. I think, I think so. y'all are right. I think our thumb needs a gap then. I'm sorry, I promise you're not going to, it's not going to be 90 minutes of me playing with points. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> stay, stay with me. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Oh, I'm starting to I'm starting to like it. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm liking it so far. Let's see, let us know in the chat. All right. Uh, Robert says looks great. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love the the affirmations. Designers need more of them sometimes. We're hot on ourselves. Okay, I think we're gonna get hit, hit a stopping point here. I do think this needs to stay connected because it so it, we don't lose that closed off space. We want it, the thumb to look behind the fingers. All right, I'm gonna raise the stroke a little bit to see. That's what I thought. We would need more gapage. Let's see. We are, believe it or not, also almost like already halfway through. Oh, the no stream. way. Yeah, um, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> I know. I was too excited about this. I It's my favorite thing in the world to talk about is branding. And so I was like, I get to talk about it with a bunch of people who also care about branding. Let's see. I love uh, it. Leah or Leah, I'm not sure on the pronunciation, is saying very clean strokes. Awesome. And uh, of course, there's nice round lines. Thank you. Val says it looks great over on YouTube. Christine, Thank you guys. Lots of people are liking it so far. So I think you're so, in good shape. I think so too. I think we're going to roll with this. I think so. This is just the before. This is the after. Well, I guess this is really the before. That crazy yeah. thing I drew. In the whole process right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry to finish. So what we're going to do is now we're going to lean into this. So we need to add some text to this. Normally I wouldn't delete my process like that, but we are going to do e e e z e z. So I'm kind of thinking we keep I'm thinking like the lingo people would talk about this by would be like pizza, like they would say we're going to go to pizzas. They probably yeah. wouldn't say a ton like pizza's pizza, so I'm thinking right. we should lean into that. And we're going to add pizza in there, but we want, we're just going to play with pizzas for right now in book mania, not Recoletta. I knew that was Recoletta. I could just tell. Uh, did <laughs> you <know>? tell? <laughs> I was like, awesome. oh, I love that font. It's uh, such a good one. All caps. I'm giving myself away. All caps is um, main logos and Recoletta. That's that's the main the main deal. Okay, so we're gonna go back to glyphs, my favorite part. I think we definitely we need to make this a little bit more visually interesting. It doesn't look it doesn't look quite right yet. I'm I like that on the end. I'm curious if we could pull maybe in. I think that doesn't feel right. Maybe it's not with this. And like, yeah, we're about halfway. Um, if you're just joining us, Maggie is working on a pizza brand in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, called Eats Us. 
called Itza's from not, the chat. <laughs> yes. Named not by me. I can't take credit. <laughs> Let's explore the T. I think, I think honestly, having the E and the H working together might be enough for right now, but we can. Is there a, like a strategy to picking like which characters you would add, um, you know, so, you might yeah. select a different glyph for? Definitely. I think of words, especially in logos, like, you know, if you're designing a logo and you have the like central focus of the logo, you don't want a, like you don't, you want your logo to look like it's hugging itself a little bit. So people kind of get central centralized in on it. Um, I think it's so hard. It's kind of different per logo. If it's something that you're going to try and um, like, if you're going to add a lot of um, extra elements to the outside, I think that's something that you would keep in mind for this. I'm kind of thinking, I mean, I'm just kind of, I guess, not explaining this well. I'm envisioning us, you know, putting, having these hands happening, maybe something up here. And I want the energy to be directed in the middle. So I'm thinking the H kind of swooping around and the E kind of swooping around will kind of bring everything to the middle. Kind of what I'm thinking, but it just depends. It depends on what you're, what you're after. Okay, Allison is saying ship it. She's ready ship to go it. right now. Oh, ship it. Oh, I love it. Uh, John is saying, oh my God, I never knew about glyphs. I'm telling you. Your whole world is about to change. It's, it's <laughs> good. It, this is, this is it for you. This is your big break. Congratulations. You've made it to glyphs. <laughs> I literally, it's my favorite thing in Illustrator. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. I do a lot of option dragging, which instantly copies and pastes, um, whatever you're working with um so that i can see previous versions because a lot of times i feel like i'll backtrack a little bit and then move up a little bit you know add take away you're always working on things like that okay so i am looking at this i'm not wondering if maybe i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna go ahead and turn these into outlines for just right now um while we mess with these hands I just envision, oh, nope. We're gonna fix it, y'all. I know what you're thinking. I'm wondering if maybe we shouldn't have two. I see where you're going. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah, that's I'm in, fun. I'm envisioning <laughs> the motion. Yeah. One, my, one maybe maybe in my brain one I'm like maybe that's not enough to understand mm -hmm. but maybe two is I don't know let's see let us know in the chat what you think yeah I, I think then, it adds like a it it like reinforces the movement of the type I think and also yeah. like the idea the actual like motion of the hands I yeah yeah one. it's kind of what it's kind of what I was thinking I'm like okay I think I also, let's see what the, what is this centered? Let's see, where does it center? Okay, I kind of, so what I'm looking at right now is the height of the E and the H are the tallest, right? The T is a little bit shorter and then we have this kind of like built in white space here and here. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a hand here and a hand here would make sense. But let's see if we can play with it and get it where we want it. I would also, um, just want to make sure everybody knows, I promise. If this was a logo, I was actually, you know, we were designing this for some clients. We would go through many and many a round <laughs> of iterations of this. But for the sake of that, we only have 90 minutes together. We're going to do mm -hmm. our best. It's nice to hear your process about, like, considering, you know, kind of the white space. We were actually, I just had somebody ask this question about, like, you know, I've, I've, I centered something, right? Like centered some text and a mark or an image, but it doesn't look right. Right. Like yeah. the difference between like something that is literally centered and like something Visually that feels centered. centered um, yes. Are like two different things. And in that you know process that you just kind of explained is how you go about creating something that feels balanced um, and not yeah. necessarily relying on that, like mathematical centering to yeah. get there. 
It's so real. I think it's, I think it's kind of funny. I think sometimes, you know, I say this not to sound at all elitist, but I think sometimes you can tell, you know, like the men from the boys a little bit in terms of that. Like if you're like, that's actually centered and it needs to not be actually centered. Right. <laughs> Maybe that's just me and something I dream about at night, but <laughs> it's so true. It's, it's, it's funny how your eyes can like create illusions for you, you know? Okay. I don't know. What are you guys thinking about this two-toned a two level, not two toned, two level hand situation. We've got one comment over from uh, John saying maybe flip them. Flip uh, them so they're like this? I'm not sure. Maybe you can uh, elaborate, John. It. But that might be what they're saying. Yeah. Maybe try a version like that. Yeah, let's do it. I love it. Collaborative design is by sure, by far, by sure, by far the best design. Oh, wait, that might be better. Although now John's saying, I don't know. <laughs> we can, well, if there's not, vectors are free, right? We can always just see what it looks like. We don't have to, you know. It's we're so not, true. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Married my to only, it, so. My issue with this, I think, is this trapped space. I feel like there should yeah. be something else there. Mm -hmm. So I think. Although that now is like reminding me of hand throwing dough. Which, I, you know, not this? to give you any more ideas. Yeah. Oh, it totally is. <laughs> I know it's for, oh well I guess we're starting to look like one of the original inspiration brands okay I think for the sake of time we're going to lean into this and if we decide yeah. that it's not the winner we're going to come back and we're going to work with it let me just re check really quick that this doesn't need to be thinner oh it does it does so I'm I think contrast is important and I think it's important, like, if you have two high contrast things, like, our letters are really thick and this is thin. If this feels like it's supposed to be the same thickness as the letters, it needs to be the same thickness. Um, but if it's not, it's, like, almost good to go the other way. So it's, like, looks intentional. So I think yeah, we're I can, I can never, I don't know what the exact, like, there's got to be a word for that. All I know, like, tangents, like, it is, you'll, like when yeah. something is too close, like, the tangents. Yeah. Um, I but I know that that's not quite the same thing as, like two things that are like close but not this quite the same weight and your brain it just like messes with your brain to see it that way yeah 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 I, I don't know what that I tangent sounds good that feels feels smart yeah. feels I know right. that like a like it it's referred to as a tangent when it's like it's two things that are like really close but like not quite touching yeah um oh, so yeah, I don't, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. quite the same thing um but I'm sure there's a name for it maybe somebody in the chat knows yeah anybody knows John saying juxtaposition oh yeah that might be ju juxtaposition that's true like two things that are opposite but that coexist I think that's y'all 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 know what you're talking about I, I <laughs> I'm not I don't know um so I'm kind of thinking pizza house what do we what yeah do we... I like that I also I think one I think pizza house makes it feel that's funny, homey. And so I think maybe we should lean into Pizza House. I don't know. I kind of like this. I kind of like the level. I think hierarchy right wise too. We have um let's look. The first thing you see, you know, the thickest, the boldest, the biggest is the center pizzas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love this pizza name, y'all. Okay. <laughs> and then second, our eyes go to Pizza House. And then third, they go to um the thinner hands that we've created mm -hmm. so I'm thinking I don't know though let's see and then we got to move on because I'll do this forever I think it needs to be thicker I agree I think that the bottom one is just too like we just talked about just too close just too close to the, to the top line weight yeah. um and I feel like the the heavier pizza house is still far enough away from you know your main type that it still has enough contrast so. yeah Okay, cool. Well, this is loving the visual triangle. I think the shape. The oh, yeah, I can that see that create. too. That's what I'm saying. You want things to feel kind of like, maybe I just like hugs, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you want things to feel kind of like they're hugging, you know? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead um, visually just to help my little designer brain. I am going to go ahead and create like what we're going to call like our final logo. 
And just so we can see it kind of all in motion, look how cute she is. I'm so excited. Okay, so that's kind of, you know, gives us a jumping off point. It like, it feels good. It feels like we have something happening for us. When I'm designing brands, I usually have like my crazy process situation down here. And then up here, I will fill in. I have not done well at doing that right now. Um, and is this like a template that you typically would use? Like you have this file set up for yourself? Um, yeah. Yeah. So oftentimes I'll open a completely separate file and then I'll have the like the crazy at the bottom. Um, yeah. <laughs> but then at the top, you know, the the brain dump, the squiggle, the squiggle yeah. at the bottom. Um, and then at the top, I'll have um, more of like an organized bit. I also do that because sometimes if you're designing like lots of elements, like if you have a client that needs icons and a menu and all these things, it's like, so you don't forget something, it's good to have this. So I have, um, I have this that I have templated for myself that I've copy and paste into all my, all my files. All right. Since we're leaning into this, I'm going to go ahead, jumping around some layers, y'all. Sorry, stay with me. I okay. mean, I'm, I was, I was going to say that like your layer organization is, is uh, a thing of beauty. I, I appreciate it good. I'm a, um, uh, I'm a layer organizer, so. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, okay. I have to admit something actually. I'm normally not out of about <laughs> I, in my old age though, have become a lot better about it because as I've just worked with more elements like you have to or else like save yeah. yourself the headache you know and do it in motion while you're working on it agreed I think our red might need to be brighter we're gonna we're gonna look into it we're gonna talk about it okay so here um this isn't like necessary, I wouldn't say, but okay, come on, mania, it's not working with me. This helps me keep a good, um, good tr like helps me keep track of the fonts I'm using and um, it just like helps me keep track of what's going on. Like as I make decisions and I'm gonna like mm -hmm. lean into it. Um, also with things like this and like variable fonts and stuff, there'll be so many fonts. It's just like, it's good to keep things, keep things organized. So this is kind of like my visual, whereas like we had the colors that I showed you guys earlier, like, you know, the tiny color versus the big color, whatever, this is kind of the same thing. Our tiny subhead is also going to be Atrament, I think. So I kind of am envisioning, where are our colors? Sorry, not trying to make y'all nauseous, motion sick. I so see yeah, you got I, your little like my little hierarchy template. there too. Yeah. <laughs> I do this, I do this literally the same process every time I'm picking colors and things. I get really overwhelmed with colors sometimes too, because I am the designer that will end up making a rainbow brand every time. Cause I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, but what if they need it for this and this and this? And I'm like, mm -mm, it's not that serious. So, um, yeah. So this is acumen is one that I found. Then, so many styles I know there's so it's so good it's so overwhelming a little bit but it's so good okay I'm gonna go ahead and steal our colors and bring them into our color library we have our red we need our off-white okay this is kind of what I was envisioning in terms of mm -hmm. the color situation Kind of like how things work together it's so like on a menu we would still be able to you know we can read everything this needs to be a darker green i don't know does that make sense yeah okay that makes sense do you always okay. use um regular swatches or do you ever use global swatches 
I have used global swatches recently. I've been in the regular swatches, which isn't, I'm not necessarily proud of, but I was just, I was just curious. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it. It's, you know, you do you. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, um, uh, I feel like, I feel like in school, I used global swatches a lot. I remember. Let's see. Okay. So need to I, see the big giant collection. I think that's in relation to the artboards and being able to visualize everything. Oh yeah. Everybody wants to see all the, <laughs> the crates. So uh, most of the time I'll do like a logo variation. I'm thinking we're gonna lean into this E as because it's such a beautiful E. Mm -hmm. And it becomes like a, you know, like a monogram. Okay. Yes. Yes. Some people call it a letter mark. I know mm -hmm. some people call it monograms. Some people call it. I was going to see it like maybe we bring these, we involve these, but I'm, not, I'm wondering if that's not necessary, actually. I don't know. Kind of fun. I think we're now we're it's gonna kind of fun it. it's tough because the e that you have is already like fits us like into this nice square yeah shape that anything that you kind of add on to it is gonna like make it's it it's gonna be a little bit crazy i mm -hmm. know i'm honestly wondering if we shouldn't just kind of like lead into this e a little bit and like stylize it yeah this is how i see this is how i whenever i have to do anything with letters this is what i'm doing i'm not yeah. i'm not a hand letterer so because it's because it's so hard like I think sometimes people undermine the lettering artists and I'm like no y'all it's so difficult it's not easy no it's not I think okay for the sake of time we're gonna run with this e and we're ease. gonna ease oh that would be a good name like a little short oh, shorthand too ease <laughs> that's cute oh wait that is cute <sighs> I want to, I don't know. I'm worried. I'm a little worried about time. So I want to keep going. That's but... okay. Okay. For now, we're going to lean into the C. Hey, always, yeah. you know, come back. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. If we come back, we're going to spend, I, I'm telling you, I, I struggle because um, I spend so much time on logos, you know, which is good. Yeah. It's, it's what you should do. Um. I think another variation that would be good would just be eats us. I think that mm -hmm. I could see that being something that the brand would need in terms of like a secondary logo. Um, secondary logos, sometimes like I will have four different logo variations for a client. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, four or five, Easily. six. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes they'll have an emblem. Sometimes they'll have a letter mark, sub mark. Like I hear here, I kind of had, you know, I was prepared to have, you know, several, um, and so I just, I just think it's important. You kind of have to think about what your client's needs are, especially if they're doing like right. a website and things like that. But I know you never want them to think like, I, I can't, I don't have a logo for the, that fits this, you know, right. You never or, want them to get to that point. Right. And I think it's important to make the logos kind of obvious for, um, for them, for your clients to use, like branding designers don't know how to use branding. I mean, not people who aren't. People who yes. aren't branding designers don't right. know how to use their branding sometimes, which is why brand books exist and stuff. I wish I could have time to design a brand book with you guys, but okay. So next one, time. Next we'll time. Have, have you back. I know. I would love to come <laughs> back. I was so giddy when I got asked to do this because I was like, I'm such an Adobe Live fan and I feel not, not bougie enough for this, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm having a good time. <laughs> Okay, uh, I do want to do this really quick. I just think it'll be... Speaking okay. of, um, if you are over on in our Behance chat, right above the chat, there's a tab that says guest recommendations. If you would like to uh, recommend yourself or um, somebody you know, um, feel free to go ahead and submit to that form. Um, you can, again, you can do it over on, on the, the Behance chat. So, And you can come yeah. hang out with us and have all this fun like Maggie and I are having. Yeah. See, I want to come be like a host. It should be a fly on the wall <laughs> too. Like, a, like, like you, Jack. I mean, I don't know if I could do what you're doing. You're, you're so good at this, but I want to, 
I just want to be a little fly on the wall. I love, I, it is, uh, very, it, I mean, it's a great experience. I love getting to meet different, all, all kinds of creatives and, and also just like take yeah. in the process. Yeah. Learn how everybody works and, um, but I mean, the same as if you join, uh, our chat, you know, I'm watching along, watching it happen along with you also. Watching the magic. I know, I love somebody said magic. I was like, oh. <laughs> in a way, sometimes we feel like magicians. I just feel like I was thinking about the stamp and the sticker, and I think these hands are totally going to be like, can't you just imagine this on like the closing a carry out box? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Giving to the kids. You know uh -huh. what I mean? <laughs> so, what I did is I um, took this stroke and I did object path and I outlined the stroke. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut it away with Pathfinder from the circle. So it's um, kind of, it cuts it out of that shape. Mm -hmm. It actually like makes it a part of the yeah. shape itself. So you could put it on any background. But also if you were doing something like, you know, imagine this is like a sign, like one of those circle signs on the outside or whatever. You could do like a cut metal kind of. Oh, look. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can tell they're related, but not same. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like variation and similarity is always kind of tough. Okay. So I actually did the stamp design over there. So we're going to, I'm sorry. I tried to make it pretty for you guys, but I did it how I would normally do it. And I put it all on one artboard, <laughs> but it's okay. We have it up there. We have it up there. Um, okay. So now we're going to apply this branding that we've just created to our menu. Uh, I... This is the reason I really wanted to do this was because I haven't designed, um, I've helped with, but I haven't designed uh, a menu. A menu. Thank you. Sorry. A, um, right. what layer is this one? See, I'm not, I'm not doing as well. My layers here. I haven't designed a f like food brand, really, oh, like full okay. pull. And I've always wanted to. I think restaurant branding is crazy crazy yeah. cool and it's so a lot of fun and it's also a lot of chaos it's exactly how you probably envision it yeah <laughs> it's kind of why I chose it for today because I was like well we'll you know we'll have to make sure we get the menu down and all the things and I was like I think we can make it okay so I'm going ahead and I'm just first I have you know all of this information that our client has given us mm -hmm. and I am coming in and adding our fonts um i did create these guides um and i just based them i did a little um research on mm -hmm. just like menu design and kind of like what it's important what's important you know and so i kind of went with the simplest for us today and we're gonna make this so right now you're just adding your fonts and kind of adjusting the type that you've got yeah, in. yeah. I like not pizza as a section, by the way. I know. I did change. <laughs> I, I, thank you so much. I tried to add it myself. I was like, what do I call this? It's, it's There's either pizza or not pizza. At it. I know. Just, so yeah. that's what it is. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to feel good. I named something right. I'm actually really proud of myself. <laughs> okay. Well, Alyssa is sad this isn't a real pizza shop. I ah. So... Thank you, Alyssa. I know. I, I, I mean, I'm biased, but I would go here. They oh, yeah. Stickers. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going ahead. I added our background. I'm coming in. I'm going to make all of this green, the dark green. We got mm -hmm. some crazy letterage. Spacing happening. going on. Yeah. Which happens to the best of us. Um, I do think this needs to be bold. So this, oh wait, it's where we got the wrong font. Convinced medium. Yep, that's what we want. Okay. So we are going to come in. All right. I do think our titles need to be like each pizza title needs to be a little more than it is. It needs to be a little bit thicker, I think. 
Mm. Let's see, bold, yeah. black. Again, getting back to that like hierarchy yeah. title. You know, you've got the heading, title, ingredients. Yeah. I'm also thinking the specialty pizzas. Yeah, that feels better. It needs to be a little bit different. Um, these are important, but I don't feel they're like, and they're a part of the hierarchy, but they're not mm-hmm. the most important in terms of that, you know? Yeah, they're just kind of the thing that your eye scans when you're yes. looking to yes. find. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to steal. I love an eyedropper tool that you can do that right there and you can steal thoughts. Mm-hmm. It's a game changer. I'm telling you. I, um, I use InDesign quite a bit too, and... I wish very much so that the eyedropper tool would do that in InDesign, but it's okay. I love InDesign where it's at. Also, it has that like copy appearance thing. It does, which I can never get to work right. So, I know, <laughs> I know. I I'm I'm more I'm an Illustrator girl through and through. I went ahead yeah. and split our columns over here. What I was thinking for this is that it would be really helpful to have visuals here, and I was thinking mm-hmm. little icons maybe. Um, first thing we should do though is where where's Itza? Where's she at? We of course need the star of the show on our menu. Um, I think the menu would this would be a great way to really test your colors too. Mm-hmm. Like I'm already seeing like maybe our base color is a little too dark here. Um, and so that could be something we adjust, or maybe, maybe our red does just need to be a little bit, um, brighter, but I think overall, overall, it's looking good. Overall, I think it's, you know, working pretty well. Okay. Yeah. So let's see, let's design some icons. Let's do it. I do have a lot of these designed and this was kind of the style i was thinking i don't the know check. what y'all think do what um, i love the check pattern i'm here for it thank you i would love to show you guys how to do it it's <laughs> it's really easy um i know i kind of spoiled it for myself because i went ahead and made it before this i'm sorry but i learned this recently and it's just been a game changer in the process there's lots of ways to do patterns like there you can do it you know simply by doing this and transforming again and mm-hmm. doing them that way but if you want then to you're use using command or control d yes when you're doing that yes yeah. yes thank you for reminding me command d um and so what you can do is you can do this go to object pattern select your shape that you want to turn into a pattern and make and then you'll have the um, pattern options panel pop up. Mm-hmm. And this is where you can really like mess around with. Let's see, actually. You know, spacing of the things. You can select if you want it, you know, hex like that, which we do because we want um, a checkerboard pattern. Yeah, this, I actually am the same way. I prefer to, I actually prefer going just right into pattern, the pattern editing mode, I guess. I don't know yeah. what it's technically called. I know, I know. I'm uh, like... And and doing it this way. It's just easier for me to visualize and like, you go through all the effort to set it up on your artboard and then you make it and you're like, oh, well, now it doesn't actually work. So now I have I to know. like fix it. <laughs> I know. Well, the thing I like about this too, is like I'm about to show you. So once you create the pattern, it actually shows up. You can see me playing with it earlier. Mm-hmm. sorry spoiler alert <laughs> um it turns it into a fill mm-hmm. so then you can come over to things like your icons and instead of filling it like this you can fill it with the pattern you just created which i think is so helpful especially for something like this where you're kind of trying to bring in um texture but yeah so when i when i'm doing icons um i uh Let's see. I have to, you have to kind of, you can do it a couple of different ways. First, you can either bring in a picture of the actual thing and you can like literally trace it, which I do a lot, especially for things that include people or hands or things like that, because they're just hard to draw from memory. Um, but sometimes you can kind of get it. Like we're going to do some cheese and I think we can handle cheese without 
do you when you're creating icons do you try to stay within like a specific size or you just are you just like yeah so um typically I don't know I'm trying to remember what my typical like pixel size thing is I switch it up a lot my pixel sizes for this is a little crazy today because I wanted mm -hmm. to make sure everything could be seen and exported like with no problem but um I'll typically work like what do we have right here yeah, I'd say like minimum, I do like 400 pixels by 400 pixels, which might sound like a lot, but it's kind of like, it just, it'll scale it a lot better. Um, okay. I, I make sure you have to make sure to test your icons in lots of different sizes though, um, too, because if you have one that's like really, really small, you have to make sure it translates. These I'm not too worried about because they'll be on a menu, so they'll be pretty big. So I'm thinking for cheese, right? We need holes in our cheese. So I've just created a couple of shapes. We're going to copy that circle. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out of this. I oftentimes when I'm designing icons, I also, um, I work with a grid mm -hmm. a lot. It makes it a lot easier. I do that with logos also. Um, keeps things nice and even. Um, I think that's really important. Got, we've got about 15 minutes left, giving you a 15 minute warning. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the cheese. I'm going to bring in the other icons. And then I would love to show you guys um, how to, how I make a mock up. And we'll, so you can kind of see the brand in action. Time really does fly. This is crazy. Oh, yeah. It is. I am like <laughs> shocked actually. So yeah, so I'm just going in. I'm going to round these corners because we've rounded things in most of our brand so far. This guy got a little wonky. Okay. One more. Cheese. One more for the cheese. Yeah, I think, uh, especially for, um, oftentimes I should say for a restaurant brand, uh, icons just become a part of the for necessary sure. thing that you have for to do. For sure. Because if you're working with, um, you know, if you're working with lots of different, like things like this, there's always just so much going on. Mm -hmm. I just find it so helpful, you know, give people like a little bit of, visual help like it's just like a little little visual so here's my little pepperoni my little toppings toppings we have an olive mushroom basil leaf you know but yeah so, so in general I am gonna you know in in general I think I think overall it's starting to really work together you know Definitely. you can play around with spacing and you know you deal with it all day for sure. It might be it might be a nice moment like to add something to fill the space. Yeah, it feels well, it's like also a nice when you're making a menu just like at this point to have kind of some space. You never know yeah. if they'll want to add like you know contact info or you know what other kind of stuff they'd want to add. Oh, it's so true. I can't tell you how many times like you design a, a brand to be like tight knit and. Um, you know, like it fits only within the boxes that you created for it and then they want to make changes and you're like, oh my God, I have no space for this. <laughs> so anyway, I think, you know, this is a little, this definitely needs more work before I think it could land on somebody's table. But I think in general, you can kind of get the idea on like how things start to work together. I feel like we're achieving the kind of nostalgic feel so far too, which is fun. I went ahead and uh pulled in. Oh yeah, go ahead. Oliver would like to order, or no, not Oliver. Clever would like to order an Oliver special margarita with cheese stuffed crust and extra cheese. People are now trying to order pizza in the chat from ah. this fictional <laughs> pizza restaurant. <laughs> okay, you guys, meet me in Atlanta. We'll figure it out. I don't know. We'll make it happen. <laughs> no, I'm honored. I'm honored that you think this is somewhere you'd like to eat. I'm thinking, you know, a nice, like I'm just picturing... Oh. 
Yeah. Picturing what this could look like in motion, I feel like... So again, that's true center, but I'm gonna actually raise it a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is in a lot of ways a mock-up. Like I can't tell you how useful it is. Like my clients just seeing their logo, like just seeing a logo versus seeing it on like an image that could actually be, you know, in their office or in their, um, you know, wherever it is that their brand is going to be displayed. It just makes such a game changer. I don't know. Red, black, maybe just darkening it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's starting. I feel like it's really starting to come together. It's starting to really look like, you know, somewhere people would eat and trust. Definitely. Uh, Oliver wants to know if or you'll deliver to the UK. So I, I would love far. to. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You know what? It drops next year. Wait till 2024. It all drops. Wait. <laughs> Itza's is coming to a city near you. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's see. I do have this. We're going to try and export our logo really quick and see if we can mm -hmm. throw it on a pizza box. I think we can do it. Speed run. Speed run. We got about like right around five minutes left. So. Oh, we got years of time. Here we go. We can do it, y'all. You can tell I'm from Georgia. I'm outing myself with my y'alls. <laughs> okay. Um, naming conventions, ooh, I swear it's something I could talk about for days too. How I find, like, I, you know, perfecting your naming convention is its own beast so that it's searchable. But for right now, we're just going to primary, which is a bad naming convention. Um, so I'm exporting this as a PNG with a transparent background. Um, PNGs allow you to um, have transparent elements. We're going to import. It says, look at this. It's about to be on a box. Are you guys ready? I'm not ready. <laughs> okay. So I went ahead and I just brought it in. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and rasterize it. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and free transform. Mm -hmm. And why won't I? There we go. Okay. I'm going to go to the distort tool. There's all of these. I use all of these when I'm working in mockups. Mm -hmm. um, distort, what I like about it is you can manipulate all four corners separately, um, which is really valuable for something like this because the perspective is a little quirky on this. Perspective tool is great if you're looking at something kind of head on, like if mm -hmm. you have a perfect cube, you know. So again, um, yeah, for my real clients too, like depending on what it is, I will spend a lot of time on mockups because it's just it's just so valuable for clients to be able to see things like actually working. You know, you have to help your clients who are not designers who don't think like you do. I remember thinking that I'd be like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. It's your logo, and they're like, but what does a logo mean if it's not in motion? You know. So yeah, there's just kind of an example. Like I think you can do a lot with it. You can do, I think it I mean, this cool. came together quickly. I mean, I mean, really 90 minutes. Ugh, I'm sad that we don't have more time. There's, <laughs> I feel like we could have two so more. I've had, I picture patterns and all kinds of cool things, you know? Definitely. But hold on one second. Let me export this really quick. And then I'm going to get it in with our other branding. And then we'll be able to see it all kind of come together. By far the best part of, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. You want to just, while we're doing this, you can let everybody know where they can find your work again. Oh yeah. It so to the end. yes. Um, my branding website is all caps design, um, dot com. So you can find our projects there. Um, I do have a website um, that is my personal portfolio. It is a lot of product design, so it's not as much branding that I'm doing anymore. It is maggiemajeris.com. I can type it out really quick because my name, my maiden name's a little weird. <laughs> Horribly tiny. I 
Mm, yeah. MaggieMajeris.com or allcaps.com um, to find that, to find my stuff there. Like I said, this is more product design. It's a lot of my old work, but it still is up and running and I try to update it. Um, and then all caps is where you're going to find more of my recent stuff. I really just lo am loving our little brand we have created today. Yeah, you can give us maybe like a one minute recap, <laughs> like super <Yeah>. short recap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, it's all coming together. I love seeing the like, the um, you know, see like you said, seeing it in context on the pizza box and then with the photo and the menu really helps you understand. Like, you can kind of get an idea just from the logo, right? But it really yeah. seeing it all together, you really get a a good understanding of how it's gonna gonna look i think branding is one of the most rewarding professions because i mean it's hard i mean i you know there's a lot of hard parts about it but seeing it all come together at the end it's just so joyful but yeah i don't know i think i think if i were to wrap it up which i guess i have to it would be <laughs> you know it's important to think about all elements at the beginning of your process and throughout your process but it's like just important not to get overwhelmed by it either you know because as designers, we can always go back and change it. Um, I think it's also a conversation that you have with your clients and you'll create those perfect brands. I hope hope I was able to share something. I learned about the smooth tool today, so I feel like it's a win. <laughs> yeah, thanks Maggie for sharing your process and sharing your work with us. Uh, please, um, please stay here. We've got more Illustrator uh, up next with Annika. She'll be going over how to personalize uh, holiday gifts this season, um, but that's gonna be it. For us, thank you so much, uh, Maggie. Bye, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Bye.